I don't know if you can see it or not, but we are running into hail, which is no bueno. We do not like hail. Neither do the vehicles, and particularly the camper. What's happening? I'm Will. I'm Christy. And this is Puma Dog. After years of overlanding across the United States, we decided to hang up normalcy and move full time into imaging our 21 foot travel trailer. Our goal is to set up base camp in different regions of the U.S. and explore the areas around us. We invite you to join us as we share our adventures of full-time living. What's happening and welcome back to Full-Time Living. In last week's episode, we moved everything into Imogene and started our full-time RV journey. We moved Imogene onto some raw land and got started setting up a proper RV site complete with fresh water and sewage dump. After the big move and all the work clearing the land and setting it up with water and sewage, it was time for a getaway. So we then decided to go to Amelia island florida where we were able to enjoy some beach camping after our short vacation it was time to get imaging ready for our big journey starting with repairing yet another leak leak we got nothing <laughs> yeah i don't know it's just one of those things hey at least the silverware catcher caught it the collar for our P-trap that was installed on the kitchen sink had broken. This caused a leak into our silverware drawer. What a disaster. Luckily, I was able to source the parts at the local Lowe's in the mobile home parts section. However, just as soon as I got it installed, it broke in the very same spot. Look, so I test fit it and the damn thing broke. Isn't that crazy? That's the same exact thing that happened to the one that came with it. That's wild. My theory is that the way everything set up from the factory was just too tight and too rigid of a fit. This not only caused constant strain on the piece, but when moving it would also not allow for any flex and this would cause even further stress on the seemingly weak part. I came up with an idea that I was going to replace this with rubber instead and in theory this was a fantastic idea, but in reality, well, it just didn't work out. I ended up going to the local plumbing supply house and they hooked me up with the proper parts needed in order to make a legit repair. When we got Imogene, we really wanted the Chase Lounge, however, we were only able to find one with theater seating. And while these seats were pretty nice with their massagers and heated seat functions, the ergonomics weren't really that great as far as using the table for eating or working. Plus, these seats didn't really allow for a spot to lounge or cuddle with each other and the dogs. I decided that I would redo this area to provide a lounge area as well as some much needed storage. I had multiple videos on this process and the different versions of it, but they were lost in the great data debacle of 2020. Y'all will hear plenty more about this in future episodes. I basically built a frame out of one by ones and then made a top that I attached a 100 pound strut to and a piano hinge to allow it to raise up and down. Instead of a mattress though, I found this cheap but decent looking futon that worked perfect. Now we have a lounging area, sitting area, and storage. All this work going on around me inspired me to tackle my own DIY project in our bathroom. Today I'm going to attempt applying these peel and stick tiles that I've picked out for a camper. I want to put them in the bathroom today. Eventually I'm going to put them in the kitchen as well. I did a lot of reviews, research, got on some Facebook pages, looked at what other people did before to see what kind of worked, what didn't work, and I finally decided to go with a company called Tic Tac Tiles that I was able to purchase off Amazon with free shipping because of Prime. The pack came with 10 sheets in it. That should be enough for the bathroom today. And it's supposed to be super easy. I've never done this before, so I hope it is. You're supposed to be able to just use scissors, cut through them, align everything that you want. So hopefully this goes over very smoothly and I don't have any issues with it because I wanted to add a little bit of oomph, some glitz, a little bit of glam to the trailer because the entire trailer has this gray wallpaper, which is fine, but I want to add a little bit of color in here. One thing that I didn't know about these is they do have a very chemically smell. I guess that's the glue. So I um, would highly suggest just going ahead and pulling them out of the pack and kind of let them sit somewhere where they can air out or open a window. Betty Crocker scissors here. I'm going to carefully just cut along the edge here. It is going a lot easier than I thought it would. I'm supposed to be able to get this back off. I do not have very much nails. Oh gosh, this might actually be the hardest part. Eight hours later. Jeez, that was pretty brutal. 
What we didn't know then, but we do know now, is that we should have used this spray-on adhesive on the wall and on these sticky tile pieces before we put them on. Especially in humid climates, these will actually fall off over time. So I highly recommend that if you do this project, that you use this spray-on adhesive before attaching the tiles to the wall. I'll leave a link down in the description for everything. All right, guys, here is the final product. I really like it. I think it a little snazzier in here all right well now we have seating lounging and storage figured out as well as a glammed up bathroom it's time to mount a tv inside the bedroom so the very first thing that i did was pick up this mount off of amazon this is a master's mount it's model 2311l i'll put the link down in the description it comes pretty highly recommended and it's pretty simple setup now it does come with these screws however these screws are too long I repeat, these screws are too long. You're going to want to get shorter screws. I went to the hardware store and I got some one inch screws, which comes recommended by the manufacturer, as well as folks that have already done this before. This is what the mount looks like. As you can see, it has a little locking pin down here at the bottom in order to uh, lock it up while you're riding down the road. You'll want to get one that is specifically for RVs or moving objects, mainly because of this locking pin here. So these are the actual screws that I'm going to be using. As you can see, they're a good bit different in size. They're one inch versus the two inch screws that came with it. The two inch screws will go through the wall all the way to the exterior, so you're going to want to use these screws. I cannot stress that enough. You need one inch screws in order to do this project. Please do not do this project and put screws that are too long because they'll go through the exterior and well that'll be a disaster all right so the first thing that we're going to want to do is figure out where the tv backer location is and the way that i'm going to do that is by using magnets the manufacturer included this metal bracket here in order to mount the tv to and the way that we're going to find it out is by using these magnets to just kind of outline the area as you can see if i drop it right here then it just drops all the way down right so what i'm going to do is just kind of drag it over and now it's sticking so my manufacturer says that the TV backer is actually 15 by 18 and I don't know if that's what that measures out to be but as you can see we've got a pretty large amount of room here that we can use in order to mount the TV. If yours is wooden then you'll probably want to use something like a stud finder. Now what I need to do is go ahead and mount the TV up to that little plate and mount the plate to the actual uh, mount itself and then find out where we need to position the TV back here in relation to this TV backer. Right here. The bottom hole. Right here. For marking the location where the TV is, it helps to have a friend plus the peanut gallery over here on the bottom right hand corner of two dogs watching you to do this. Make sure that you do this properly. Right there is perfect. That's that. Well, the good news is, is it's in. So this part, uh, this part's just kind of tightening up the pieces at this point. You know, it does make you pretty damn nervous though, drilling through your brand new RV, as long as we can come in here and not see this thing on the floor in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we'll call this a winner. <laughs> I think that we're not going to have any problems. We just have to go outside and make sure that we didn't go through the uh, the exterior wall. Yeah, so I don't think we did. Fingers crossed. Is that where you're going now? Yeah. Survey says? Yeah, we're good to go. We just need to put a little caulking on there. Just playing. Those are jokes. Perfect. Power on. Uh-oh. We're going to have to stop that. Power on. <laughs> Welcome. Uh oh. Wow, press the OK button on the remote control. Oh, Lord. You can start using your LG TV after these easy setup steps. Can we pick a different voice? What happened to just having a TV that, you know, just doesn't work until you hook it up? Like, I don't need it talking to me. I mean, I don't have a setup we really need on a oh, TV. Oh, a little hedgehog on a skateboard. I mean, really? <laughs> It's the little things like the hedgehog on the skateboard. Or surf, surfboard, not a skateboard. Well, yeah, because of the ocean. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we got it up. It's mounted. It's ready to roll. Uh, my recommendation would be to take this thing off whenever you're rolling down the street, uh, but that's left up to you. That's probably what we're going to do. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you would do whenever you transport this thing down the street. Would you leave it mounted or would you go ahead and take it off the mountain, put it down, say, on the bed or something? Let me know down in the comments below. 
Shortly after moving in and preparing for our full-time journey, we learned that Bonnie, our dog of 10 years that we've had since she was born, had a rapid development of a cancer that we were totally blindsided by. About a week after the diagnosis, we had to put her down, which was devastating as you can imagine. Not only were we devastated by the loss of Bonnie, but Pumbaa was too. You see, Puma grew up with Bonnie and doesn't know anything different. He's always had another dog with him. So we would all have to adapt and make this journey without her. What's happening? Today is, well, it's an exciting day. Today is the very first time that I'm going to prepare the RV for our very first move. And the first thing that I want to do is clean it. So that's why you have a little partial nudity here. Let's go ahead and get Imogene cleaned up. It's a beautiful, hot, sunny day here in South Carolina. And I can't wait to get the Eastern Tennessee, which is where we're headed. And we'll be there until October to ride out the heat right next to Pigeon Forge, right next to Gatlinburg in Sevierville. It's gonna be phenomenal. But first, we gotta get everything packed up. We gotta get everything ready. And one of the processes that I like is a clean camper. And that's what we're about to have. Are you gonna help? I hope. So obviously this is uh, only the second time that I've actually cleaned Imogene and this is what I'm using not because I highly recommend it but because uh, well this this is all I found so I'm gonna do the roof with this and I'm gonna do that uh, on the outside there and should work out good what do you use leave a comment down below <laughs> Well, I got it all figured out, cleaned up. And I went ahead and cleaned up Austin too. I don't know how to get those black marks off. They're periodically throughout the whole trailer here. I don't know how, I don't know if you can see them, but I don't know how to get those off. Here's some more, if you can kind of see. I think I just drank it. It's really weird. All right. I think everything's packed up tight. What do you think? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Pumba, do you think everything's packed up tight? You said we making a move day? Man, that slide sure did sound rough coming in with this new furniture setup. So I reached out to Lippert Components. They said that the old setup, the Thomas Paine recliners, massage things that I had, theater seats is what they call them. They said that that old setup actually weighed 80 pounds on one side for the recliner and 80 pounds on the other side with the recliner and 20 pounds in the middle that would be a hundred and what 80 pounds which is a lot of weight well this futon just weighs 91 pounds i've got basically the equivalent of three sheets of plyboard in there which i don't know how much that weighs but i really don't think that it would be that much on this slide but ah, man the way that thing sounded coming in was a little tough so we'll have to keep an eye on that Pumba nearly had a meltdown because he could not get his bottom before the negatives as you do that the very first climb for Austin and Imogene together we're about to see how he does this is not the steepest climb that we're going to experience on this trip, but this is the first one. I don't know what gear we're in, but I do know that we're pulling 4,000 RPMs and getting 6.9 miles to the gallon. So, it's going to be a tough one, but we just got to get over these uh, these mountains, you know? Uh, that climb lost us 0.2. So, we're now averaging 6.7 miles to the gallon. I don't know if you can see it or not, but we are running into hail, which is no bueno. We do not like hail, neither do the vehicles, and particularly the camper. So hopefully this will go by the wayside pretty quickly. Well, we made it. What do you think about our new digs? I like it. Check this out. This is what I really like about it. I can't wait to fall asleep 
to this right here huh I'll take that view for the rest of the summer what do you think pretty dope definitely a must-have is one of these So we've been staying without AC since March, and uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty hot. So we're glad to be. I think the temperature here is right at around 70 right now. Of course, it's going to get hot. We're still in the southeast, but uh, it's not going to be nearly as hot as it was in South Carolina. So we're happy for that. And what were you going to say, babe? Um, I was going to say I will say since we haven't had AC when I get in AC places cold yeah because I've just gotten so used to being bodies adapted hot all the time yeah. yeah this is it this is our new digs for a little while you'll see a lot of this place so stay tuned well it's hailing again I don't know if you can see it but it's hailing his ass off Damn it. No fun. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Full Time Living. Thank you so much for watching and we hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to follow the adventures, and ring the bell to be alerted of new episodes. Be sure to join us on the next episode as we adventure around and do some more upgrades to Imogene to include a full off-grid setup. See y'all later.